My name is Captain Corey Leverett. I'm the Assistant Director of Operations for the Commission Officer Training here at Officer Training School at Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. The orientation phase is the first phase of development for Commission Officer Training, and it really is about the first week to a week and a half of their training. We want our trainees, those doctors, those lawyers, the chaplains, to get the same foundation that your pilot is going to get, or the navigator, or anybody else that steps into the Air Force and puts this uniform on. Is that understood? Yes, yes sir. So step one here at Commission Officer Training, getting them acquainted with how they should wear their uniforms, with how they need to march, how they need to carry themselves as professional officers. We're going to talk a little bit about what goes on here at OTS. It includes things such as the very basics of military heritage, Air Force heritage, drill and ceremonies, basic standardization, discipline. It's really an indoctrination into the Air Force. Crossing into the blue is a very ceremonial piece of what we do here at Officer Training School. Look down, up to but not over the blue line. When they step across that blue line, it's that first step in their new career as an Air Force officer. One, eight, four, it's a very important piece of our training here at OTS. Left, pace. Drill instills standardization discipline into all of our trainees. It teaches them teamwork, it teaches them how to come together and work on some basic processes, and it teaches them to build a team. And, and the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna start by marching. And we're gonna expect you to move as a team and step through the entire training program here as a team. And that's all a part of the orientation phase. The orientation phase was their uh, introduction to the Air Force, the very basics of teamwork, and the development phase is them applying those lessons that they've learned about teamwork and starting to slowly become leaders. So the development phase includes something like Project X. In Project X, it's an obstacle course, and there's about 22 obstacles. And what we do is we'll break the trainees down into small flights, about 14, 15 people in a flight and then we put them into these obstacles, and then we say, you're a team, we expect you to manipulate this obstacle and get through this whole process. So they could be given anything from a barrel to boards, rope, and they're expected to use all the tools that you've been given, everything that you've learned in your classrooms, everything that your flight commanders, your instructors have been teaching you, and now apply those principles. We want them to attack these scenarios and think as an officer in the United States Air Force and see what your strengths are, your weaknesses are in this controlled environment. Boom, he's taking fire, get down, get down to your knees. Yeah, yeah. Welps of the Wingman Expeditionary Leadership Problems is a specific phase in the training where we allow the trainees to actually step out and for the first time be a leader of their team. We designate an individual in their team to be a leader. We take them out to the field and it's a mock deployment environment where they've got to be able to do some basic land navigation. They have to provide their team with security and their leader has got to be able to take his or her team through this process. We give them a basic set of instructions and we say, here's what we expect of you, and then we evaluate them. If they don't get feedback, they don't know what their strengths and weaknesses are, and that's how they grow through this process and become better leaders in the Air Force. The tattoo ceremony is a symbolic event. It's a change of command ceremony, and it really is a passing of the guide on from the staff to the trainees. Sir, I assume command. And from that point forward, we say we're going to slowly step back and we're going to expect you to step up, start holding each other accountable, start making those leadership decisions. Sir, I assume command. From day one through the end of training day 23, we expect them to gradually take on more and more responsibility. And this is a very symbolic piece of that. The application phase is just like it sounds. They're expected to apply all the leadership theory, the teamwork, the team building, in the basic exercises that they've done in their classrooms and really apply it in a simulated deployed environment. The medical readiness indoctrination course, we like to call it EMRIC, is where we take the trainees out to a location we call Blue Thunder and we set up a basic field hospital. We simulate different scenarios that they may see as medical professionals or chaplains or even lawyers in a deployed environment. <laughs> So we do things like mass casualties, where they have 20, 30 casualties, and they've got to learn how to deal with all the individuals that work for them. It's not specific to their job. Its core focus is, can you apply those lessons at a deployed location? And that's what we focus on. The ropes course is a motivational event. They walk out on what we call the toothpick, which is just two telephone poles that are about 50 feet in the air. Like all that rope. Of course, they're harnessed in, everything is completely safe. They've got to learn to trust your equipment, to trust your wingman. It's a lot of fun, but it's also a confidence building tool as well. 
at the Leadership Reaction Course, we take the trainees and they're, they're in flights or groups of about 14, 15 individuals and each of the trainees will actually get the opportunity to lead their team. Can you lead them? you know, through these barrels, over this, and it sounds very elementary, but it's all about problem solving. It's all about your basic leadership skills. Leadership is universal, so can you take that, apply what you've learned in the flight room to the obstacles that you see out here? The transition phase is the last phase of commission officer training. We've walked you through 23 training days, and now we're gonna transition you to that operational Air Force. And it's really when the staff starts to take that coach or mentorship role. They slowly step back even more and, and open up a lot about their personal experiences, what to expect when you transition from commission officer training to the operational Air Force. Graduation is exciting. Graduation is the last step before you finally can say, I've finished officer training school and I'm gonna step foot off Maxwell Air Force Base. I'm gonna step foot onto wherever their base is that they're going to. It's an exciting event, not just for the trainees, but for their family members. They get to watch their spouse, their son, their daughter, their mother, their father. They get to watch them raise their right arm, do the oath of office. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. It's a very formal event, but it's a lot of fun for families and our trainees as well. Officers dismissed. When you put this uniform on, it means that you live the core values. Integrity first, service before self, excellence in all we do. And that's what it means to be an Air Force officer, that you are an example to your airmen every day, all day.